initialized. What's up guys, it's Bakken back with some more RA content, stepping away from combined arms and everything that's going on over here because Raggle is about to start on the RA side of things, so we need to get some RA games in, get some good stuff there, but this is a little bit of a crossover event because we have Eno playing as Russia in his purple color here in the bottom left. He is somebody who I played in Combined Arms, and he is a pretty decent player. It's be interesting to see how he plays in RA. I think he said he's played here, just not a whole lot of 1v1s and stuff like that. So I think this will be really interesting. And up here, it is the ever-present Biazzo playing as Germany in his blue color. We are on Discovery, classic lad map. Double mind expansion here, double mind expansion here. Kind of a weird double mind expansion here, and then these single mines on each side. Well, Derek's are really far in this corner here. It looks like Eno is going up, and Biazzo is going straight to that middle. He's going to have to destroy that barbed wire fence if he wants to cap it. Luckily, he's just pushing with some rifles there, but that engineer is coming there, so we will have to see. It looks like Eno is uh, going into some tech already off of one ref, so that is definitely a build. Uh, I think you could do this in RA a little bit, or combine arms a little bit, but RA, this is uh, some strange stuff here, so... Maybe this game will be really strange or really quick, we'll have to find out. you also going to get that comp center in the middle, you know, going to get his oil derrick pretty safely here. Let's see if he wants to go anything else. Nope, just going to park there for now. Yeah, so quick. A quick Ritter dub is uh, kind of throwing me off. Looks like he did pick any Soviet and Beelzeb went with just any, so I think he uh, maybe likes the Soviet side a little bit more, but that'll be very interesting. and. Yeah, he's going straight for a yak, probably. Unless he's gonna follow up with the tech center, but needs a war factory for a tech center, so that's gonna be unfortunate. So this is the quickest yak I think you could conceivably do, except for maybe skipping the racks. Unlucky for him there, his engineer is gonna go down, lose that oil there as well. I don't think he also lost much of anything at all, just a whole two rifles. So he's having a grand or whole good early game right here. Split his refs up, which I'm not a fan of, but it is what it is. War Factory is going to come out just as time for, you know, second ref. Just as that yak comes out too, so. I mean, this is going to be nice. If he can honestly get some early infantry kills, this could be really good. Uh, maybe even just snipe a ref would be fantastic if he could do that. But that's going to take two more yaks at the minimum. And there's always the risk of just running into some random rocket soldiers. That would be really bad. You know, does have to worry about this too, because Bielsa did capture it, but... I feel like it's a little bit unlikely. But I mean, I don't think Bialzo is one to scout an early base like this, so he's not gonna see this for a long, long time. So if you can get a huge number of yaks, that'll just cut down on all the infantry. And then, I mean, what do you really do there as Bialzo? You can send your base, try to tech up to tier two, but if you don't kill any yaks, then those yaks are just gonna grow and grow and grow, and eventually they're gonna become a huge problem to deal with. So this will be very interesting. He's got two yaks out. Two yaks out now. This could be a, a good MCD hunting party, but they are going to get spotted there, likely. We'll have to keep track. <laughs> yeah, he sees him now. The engineers sacrifice himself. Going to go for power, which is not a bad idea at all. It is going to force Piazza to sell. Oh, almost gets the second power plant, but it does get the two axe out, which is nice. Third one not coming up, so... Kind of surprising there. I thought he would go for maybe a third yak, but I just don't think he can afford it. He's going for a war factory instead. He's only on two harvesters at minute four. It's kind of crazy. He's gonna try to move this MC out. And I mean, I guess, yeah, if you're Biazzo, you don't really want to push right now. You know, two yaks, you expect there to be more maybe. If you do push out with what you have, you're likely just gonna die. But at the same time, if Biazzo just attacks, I don't think there's really much you know, could do about it. Two yaks, still need to rearm handful of infantry, it'd be go pretty bad for him. It's like, Yazo is going to try to push out, which he's going to push the wrong side, unfortunately. He needs to push this side. I think that's where you'd expect an expansion to go. These two yaks are up and armed. The ranger's probably going to go down. No, not yet. Going for the infantry instead. Oh, does not get any of the rockets. That is unfortunate. That was definitely not worth it. Destroyed loss, looking a little bit in Yazo's favor there. All the rockets living. Yeah, if those rockets went down, that would have been great. If that was bent, I'd expect him to have the rockets go down. But now, you know, he's gonna have to deal with this. He's got one flame tower out, a few rockets. I think he'll be okay. Just needs to focus on those rockets. Building another yak again. 
which again, those are going to be pretty valuable. He needs to keep them alive a little bit better. But he's at three harvesters, which is not bad. But he is a little bit broke. He cannot build from all his Qs. Just needs to pause that infantry queue for now. Doesn't even need a second Rax yet. I feel like skip the Raxes for now. Maybe get another airfield would be really good. But you're definitely in a pickle. You need that fourth harvester. It's finally out. Fifth harvester out here would be pretty good. And then honestly, probably a quick expansion again with another ref or just an additional ref on this patch would be really good. We also finally got his expansion out, and I do like that he is doing this little split here. Although there is not enough rockets on this left side. Is that even a rocket right there? There is one rocket on this right side. All the rockets here on the left. I mean, this will be really good if it gets in and gets some damage done. But again, the yak is going to come out. That could get a lucky yak trash, get a few of those rockets. It could be pretty good. Light tank's going to poke and die because they're not being record very well. This tech going all the way on the flank. You can get three harvesters here. Which is good, but this is the money maker right here. You know, it's gonna go down to the bottom, gets the rocket there, which is nice. Oh man, there's so many rockets there. Oh, a V2. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Fantastic V2, instant vet one. And suddenly there is one rocket left with this push. So I think Eno is gonna be okay. That V2 shot, not as good, but man, the swarm is coming in now. That is a lot of light tanks to deal with. Is this a Light tank? I guess it is a like a light tank through ref build. It's not quite maybe just moved out early since all of the axe. And yeah, the axe are definitely not gonna be super effective against light tanks. So you know it's definitely on the back foot here. That is a lot of light tanks to deal with. I think this is gonna go down on top. It does have one yak, but it's not rearmed. He needs another heroic V2, and it's here. Uh I don't think that one's gonna be good. In fact, the infantry all gets away. This attack on the right side going pretty badly, but he's still got four light tanks down here. One rocket is not enough to hold that off. But those two yaks cleaned up a lot of the infantry there, so... The yeah, also probably should start considering teching. It's gonna get an SC out, not a bad idea. I'd go immediately into radar afterwards. This ref not greatly priced, but he's already right. Probably should transfer his hearts. That's probably hurt his eco a lot. In fact, yeah, he is both broke. Both these players are broke. Seven minutes in, and there's probably like 6,000 collected each. Income 7,000, 7, 5,000. Yeah, this is actually down in income. Just needs to camp this ore. Maybe focus a little bit on here. It'd be a good. Oh, that D2 could be a good pick. Now that Yak going down, he's got one left. Not gonna get the V2. Needs to commit. Nope, does not commit. Gets the light tanks out. That's nice. APC coming out too. Don't push too far. There is a flame tower right there. Oh, and the Yak coming over. It's looking for a good strafe. Light tank gets in the way a little bit. Gets a decent strafe there. Oh, don't lose it. It's out of ammo. It's gonna get out of there. Nice. Man, that V2 just hanging on by the edge of his life. Ooh, pair drop down here. Okay. But he also quick to response. Pulls the harvester away. Gets a nice transfer over there as well. Should not lose that ref. Got a light tank and a few refs coming in. Pressure's bound on the backside. Don't think he's gonna get it. V2 gets the rocket soldier. Yak probably gonna get that light tank and it did. One harvester goes down on the backside. Man, what a scrappy game. What a weird build order. Yeah, I guess that's kind of part of the fun when you do something weird like this, isn't it? I hope he also never got his other world's arc over here. I guess he just had the engineer and the ranger and the ranger died. Ranger was over here just a minute ago. I think it pushed you far in. That's unfortunate for him. That extra world arc would be nice right about now. SD's out for you know, so this game's probably gonna stabilize a little bit. Both these players are just extremely broke. Oh, and another harvester gonna go down here, and it's full. Oh, that hurts. That's 500 down the drain. V2 is not finding the mark there against those light tanks. Third V2 over here. I do like this camp right here. Oh, but the axe gonna get that. I think it's got just enough. Oh, as soon as he gets out of that minimum range, even with a short minimum range, still got a. Oh, just not enough. That's unfortunate. Maybe you're gonna try to plan for a yak crash? Nope, just gonna try to get him out of there. I like it. Yeah, you know he's gonna have to respond to this. He can't allow that to camp. Two light tanks camping here, but those aren't super concerned. Oh, well, especially with the test coil. That's gonna shut down that. That is a frontline V2. You don't see that too often, but it's gonna work out for him. Fortunately, that V2 wasted its rocket. Viazza is gonna get pushed out of there. He you know, started to look in a good position, but let's see what Biazza's has got. He's going to take more than half his map, I think. He's starting to look not too bad for him. He's got a large army. 
10,000 or 13,000. So, you know, actually has a big army, but he's got three X. I pretty much that's the difference there. 1,300 each. Yeah, just just a little bit more. You know, I mean, he has some expensive E2 units there too. Light tank gonna go down. Unfortunate for Biazzo. Probably needs to switch to medium tanks at this rate. And definitely go to tier 2. You need to lose the AA guns to stop down this harassment. Losing an MCV to some roving yaks would be pretty bad. Can lose his SD too, that would be pretty bad. But I think this ref is a great choice here. There's a lot of harvesters. That is unfortunately gonna probably help Biazzo transfer his eco a little bit, but you know, all those refs getting shut down is pretty good. Pretty much do that every 30 seconds as long as there's yaks get rearmed and moved out instantly. MCV not gonna get spotted, so that is nice for him. Comp center going down. He also has a big armor here he could be using. I mean, if he can get his MCV here, that'd be really great. He's already got this corner. Just has to worry about uh, splitting too much, which he's kind of doing right now. Definitely need to control the middle of this map a little bit. Good spy plane here. Probably gonna catch some of the army. Nope, that's the wrong person. Yep, catches a lot of the army moving. Should have let him know that there is an attack coming. Oh, but those V2s. One goes down, two go down. Two V2s for two light tanks, definitely worth it. And this flank is gonna go all the way in the back. I'd rather just attack here. You scouted it with your light tanks. Oh, that is gonna cause Eno to send his entire army over. Does he also have a response over here? Nope, and he's still producing light tanks. That's uh, quite interesting. Oh, does not get a good crash. Loses two yaks, got a decent strafe at least. V2 could be pretty good if he micros it, but nope, it's just on attack move. Unfortunate there. Man, there are so many light tanks for Yazo. He has what, only four? All four of them right here? I guess they're just dying like flies because they're light tanks, but it's gonna, this is the latest you've ever seen light gates in minute 12. Another yak going down after a strafe there. APC probably gonna go down too, and with that, Yazo probably gonna be able to hold there. Oh, there isn't the V2, never mind. That army will get eventually cleaned up, but you know, losing a little bit more assets than he probably should there. And what a tough game. He's got one army here, that's pretty much it. He's got a few infantry just scattered around his main base, two Yaks coming out. And Biazo is just slowly, slowly smothering and expanding again. He's got so many harvesters over here, I do like that. But no tier 2, that is definitely something I would change. Biazo's gonna go in here, but again, these Yaks are gonna have an excellent strafe. Oh, shouldn't have lost that second yak, I don't think, but does gonna push back Biazzo there. So Biazzo is gonna have to wait again. Three light tanks just chilling in that field. Not gonna get Harvester for some time, but might get some poke damage. Another pair drop coming up here. See how quickly Biazzo wants to react. Nothing yet. Oh, he's going for the ref. Not a bad idea. Biazzo has excess Harvesters, so if you can kill all the rest, that'd be great, but... I think it's always better to go for harvesters if you can. Light tank getting cleaned up in there. Of course, they move over here, but he knows on top of it, he should be able to clean him up without losing one harvester. It's gonna be close, but I think he'll get away. Ref does go down, and there is the tier two transition. I see an artillery and the AA guns that are popping out. I guess the radar was up here, so I must have missed it. So it's uh, looking pretty iffy for Eno right now. He's got maybe one last attack, and if you can kill this see that'd be really good. That could be a way back in. This is going to be very hard to break through, so focusing more on this right side, probably a little bit more important. Another ref over here would be nice too. He's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven harvesters. Seven or twelve harvesters, yeah, that's that's something. Earned is about, uh, it's not, it's about 30 less, 30k less. So yeah, you yeah, guys definitely taking that economic advantage is running with it, and I'm sure that's translating and choose, wow, his destroyed loss is so bad. 25 to 41, but his army value is pretty much even, so all that extra money is going in just keeping him apace with, you know, on this army value. Yeah, you can see the earnings graph. Huge spike there. He's in a ref. Go down a little bit. But again, he transfers his harves. He's going to be right back up. I wonder if we'll get to, oh, I, never mind, there is tier three and an iron curtain on the way out, so that's another way back into this game if Gazzo takes a little bit too long. I feel like if he just starts attacking, he could definitely make it through. Just needs to pick the right spot. Over here, probably the best spot. 
just because the tech is over there, but of course he doesn't know that. Is there any rockets back here? Nope. It's all rifles, unfortunate. I mean, there is a test coil, so he's not going to be able to poke too much unless he sits right here. Oh, that V2 does spot that conyard. Oh, we'll see. He's trying to wait for the axe to cause that another play. Biazzo pulls it back smartly. He's going to see that other conyard, I'm pretty sure, as well. Yep, got that eyes on that. He's, he's seen all the conyards so far. One more shot. Oh, he saw the artillery too. There is a Blackhawk there. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was hoping the V2 would get it. Artillery, you're going to push back those infantry for now. Iron Curtain is out. I'm sure we're going to see a Mammoth Tank transition. In fact, we've seen a Heavy Tank transition. Mammoth Tanks would be pretty good. There is one coming out. Tech Center coming out for Riazzo, so he's not too far behind on Tier 3. A MIG coming out. All right. So we're seeing all the cool stuff. We've seen some Shockies as well, so we're getting the full the full Monty here. Artillery. Artillery. Killing a Technician, because why not? Ooh, we've got two on that V2. That's nice. So there is a Black Hawk lurking in the shadows there. Oh, MIG barely gets out of dodge since it right to the SD. That's nice. That Mammoth Tank will easily deal with two artillery, but they're going to retreat anyways. Oh, and the V2 going to go down to that art Black Hawk just like I was worried about, unfortunately. Still want to see that Elite V2. But it will not be that one this time. Mega, I mean, it's an interesting choice, but there's pretty much Aegon's littering the other side of the field. There's very few gaps that it can get between most on this left side. And again, he's got that spot anyways. And the mid goes down. So this is getting into a very, very passive stalemate game. Iron Curtain's not quite ready yet, but the longer this goes on, I think the more Eno's going to be in a better position. Mammoth and Shockies is going to be tough to deal with as allies. Especially without any radar jammer, so it's all gonna be down to positioning and correct mass. If they all split. I think you know we'll have a better chance. If the also masses could be pretty good. Army values are still pretty close despite the destroyed loss that's that's tripping me up. 14 harms over eight harms now. And Biazzo's only really up one mine and he's not really harvesting from it. So here we go. We got an attack on the left and an attack on the right. But you know, those tanks are a little too far forward, but that is an IC plus. That's gonna be pretty good. Same time over here. I expect this to go down. So this is gonna be pretty good though. MCV is gonna be here, and it's not gonna get away. Just then deploy the shockies will just roast it. He also needs to not retreat too far because he cannot afford to lose too much of this. Yep, yeah, so this right side got cleaned up for pretty much free, but you know, did take this. Oh no, the Blackhawk goes down. Mig gonna clean up those two light tanks. Nope, that one's just gonna retreat. So really not much accomplished with that IC push. Oh, this artillery could be so good, but it's gonna get pushed back. That was a nice V2 shot as well. No Tanya either. And in fact, Biazzo is not producing from his barracks. That could be a big problem. Oh, this could be pretty good for Eno, I think. All of these yaks. Can instantly die to the A gun. Ah, uh, kind of wasted there. Well, Armory is getting kind of worn down a little bit here, but we are pretty much even. In fact, Biazo is does not have a ref on this right side or, or ref on this left side. So that is not good. Another pair drop right here. That is a sure favorite spot. So many harves, just long distance mining. That is a big army to deal with, and he has got all his army on the right side. He also does have a second MCV still. I think maybe he had a third MCV. GPS is about to go off too, and he's floating. He really needs to start that infantry queue. Where's this War Factory one over there? One Mammoth Tank flank. So Longbows could clean that up. There's Tanya. Cap Jenner going to go down. Not really hiding much of anything. Does not seem to need to send his whole whole army though. Just a few medium tanks. Some Raider armor would be really good as well. And that mammoth tank definitely gonna go down. Mechanic would be great as well. Another gap trainer comes up because why not? But unfortunately that medium tank a little outclassed there. 
two heavy tanks and a mem tank, a little too much for it to handle. Tanya is here, so this could be pretty good. Is the IC ready? It is. IC push here will be pretty good. Putting Tanya in that pillbox would be really fantastic. MC are going to go down. That is unfortunate. This army is going to get recalled to the middle. So, you know, up to three Warfighters now, that's making a big difference as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I feel like Biazzo is still in a little bit better position. He just needs to expand here and start base pushing here. That could be really good. I mean, base pushing anywhere would be great. That's kind of what he wants. He wants to sit in his base, let artillery do all the work, force IC usage just to kill artillery rather than cause a death push. And a nuke silo out. Wow. So this game is officially on the timer. I think this is not on the current regal pile launch, so does not have Trip T's decreased nuke timer there. Oh man, those shock is getting so much value. And that yak just killing so much. But this Blackhawk's gonna be pretty good. That artillery is also in really good position, but he's retreating. Oh, he just needed to let that artillery shoot. No. Ouch. Army value starting to look heavily in Enosphania, but there is always that Tanya. You never know. Yeah, base pushing is definitely the way here. Got his tech and MC back out. Same position as the last one. Needs to start plopping those AA guns. Macaroon up on those artillery. And probably two to two to one on those infantry ratio. Oh, you know, one of the attackers isn't gonna defend. Looks like he's gonna split. I think that's the correct move here. It's a lot to deal with, but he's got a pretty good sized army, and I know that IC is ready. And another gap gen. Oh, but again, just a weird angle there. Texan are gonna go down. Does not even use his GPS. Third MCV into the mix, probably instantly gonna go down. Tiny playing that. Push in the middle, but he's now he's losing out on this right side. He seems to be uh, not gonna be able to deploy there. It's like the one spot you can't deploy. He needs to go in, he's got no armor there. That medium tank is not long for this world. That two on that V2, that could be pretty good. Loses his MC again, so this is his only MC. Just kidding, he's building nothing but MCs now. I mean, sure, why not? That's one way to base push, I guess. At the same time, he's uh, leaving his MCV out in the open. And that MCV is going to go down. His build queue is reset since this one was moving. And this army does get by. Vet 3v2 now. We are so close to elite. If this is the game that goes elite, that'll be, that'll be something else. Oh, I see you right there. Okay. It's going to push back. I think is in a lot of trouble right now. Does not have much artillery to deal with this any at all. He's starting to lose ground in the middle, and this army might be the death kill. One artillery not going to be enough to deal with it. His only war factor is going to go down. That's going to be huge. Man, Biazzo is floating so much, too. The war factor is going to make this that much tougher to deal with. All artillery in the front. All right, Tanya's done her job. Get her out of there. You don't have a tech center anymore. I think the V2 got our, the artillery. V2 got our... Tanya, rather, and it's barely gonna get out of there. Oh man, that can get out. If we can Dunkirk this, that'd be great. Oh, that was a fantastic hit, but it dies. No, we're so close to greatness. Medium tank flank, but hello. I got a big. And a Gak. Your medium tank is about to die. Man, this our mammoth tank just gonna be so annoying. Actually, I think that mammoth tank could probably kill everything right there. Especially if that infantry just stops on the edge of its vision. He's gonna try to attack there, but that is not where you want to attack. There is nothing but shockies there. The Mammoth tank just stopping outside those vision radius. He also is in a lot of trouble. He's trying to rebuild his war factory, and he's got plenty of money. Hey, a new prayer drop spot. It's actually a great prayer drop spot. Oh, man, we're going to continue kiting. That infantry is not going to like that. Yeah, I don't think Vyaza can really come back from this. There, That is a lot to deal with. IC is ready. He doesn't have tier 3 anymore. 
finally got his war factor out. He needs some removal raider jammers. That could be the one difference maker. But he's also got to split his build queue with artillery there too. Yeah, I don't know. That nuke is about halfway done too, so... And I destroyed the loss radio. 135,000 to 89 loss. That is pretty damn good. He's so close to about a third more than Biazzo. Mamba Tank still running away, gets a Blackhawk because why not? Now it's going to harass some Harvesters. Oh, and there's the Iron, Iron Curtain again. Not the best Iron Curtain, but, you know, with some Shockies and some secondary Mammoth support, he also is going to get pushed away. I'm not sure why the Blackhawk's not killing those Shockies, but it is not. Oh, will he lose the mammoth to two random rockets? I don't think so. Unless the harvester stays in vision just long enough. Nope, he pulls it away. Good micro there. He's got one more rocket to deal with. Oh, does not get it. But I think he's going to get it now. Yep, that mammoth tank up to fetch the two. That is nice. That is so difficult to deal with. Could use the Blackhawks, but again, that's really costly. Shocky's still... Poking away there, and Eno is just all over the map now. I think Yazo is in a lot of trouble. I'm not sure how Eno did it, but he has stabilized completely and overtaken this game. Oh, the Vet 2 Mammoth going down. That's unfortunate. Nice use of Blackhawks there. Loses one, unfortunately, but oof. These Mammoth tanks just being so annoying. Now they're going to retreat. Probably not going to even lose one. The lack of mobile Raider Jammers is killing Gaza right now. And Eno is just slowly whittling away. That army advantage is now double. It's going to lose some eco up here. Good artillery though, killing all the Shockies. But uh, he doesn't really have an answer to stop these two Mammoth Tanks. Artillery goes down. His radar is there. Not going to be able to get back to tier 3 even if he was trying. Instead he's trying to build eco because his cash float is finally gone but yeah you know is uh he's in a good spot i don't see him losing this game now this army is not even that scary considering all of this value right here i truly trying to get something done there but not really happening <laughs> and a mig shuts it down anyways so wow good use of the mig there man that nuke timer is getting pretty close what time do we got left two minutes we might see this nuke timer where would you put it i mean i guess for you know not a bad idea to put it right here maybe right here if he does right here that's unfortunate because there's not much there but over here would not be a bad idea at all hopefully he scouts first and let's see shocky tanking for the mam tank camo pillbox as well I think this attack's gonna go down, but again, that IC is ready. He really wants to, and there it is. Mammoth tanks are not even concerned. Medium tank goes down. They're gonna kill pretty much all of Bielzo's army. I think these two mammoth tanks probably kill all of this army too. Oof. These mammoth tanks retreat. Oh, he might lose one mammoth tank here. Might lose both mammoth tanks just through mass. Yep, both mam tanks go down. The harvesters, locusts, are all over. But here comes another flank, and we got a scout MCV, just in time. Hillbox in your face, and time to run away. Man, the shocks do so much to light vehicles. We are 45 seconds away from that nuke. I think it's, we're gonna see a nuke. It's been a long time since we've seen a nuke, but this game has definitely been super interesting. I can't believe it. It started with a raider build off of one ref. That is that is a new one. I'll have to keep that in the playbook. Biazzo's going to try to hold here, but I'm pretty sure that IC is almost ready again. About a minute left. And there's not much to stop that. Does not have any armor. And three mam tanks is a lot for all that infantry to deal with. Plus the shockies. A few rockets there as well. Ten seconds left on that nuke. There's a lot of armor and stuff here for, you know, as well. going to pop into his vision, see if I can see where he's going to... Bought that nuke. I think that was a scout there. The nuke is ready and the nuke goes off. And there it goes. 
That is not a bad position at all. Couldn't get a lot of harvesters. Probably not the war factory, but... Oh man, that is a slaughter right there. I'm gonna watch this nuke go off. <laughs> Does not get the war factory, but that is pretty much all of Yazo's stuff. Pair drop in the top left, because why not? Three mammoth tanks in your base. Another vet two mammoth tank. Yazo's got one little attack down here, but I don't expect it to do much at all. Goodbye, artillery. Oh, barely getting away. Guess I'll target the MCV instead. And here comes the push on the bottom right, too. MCV goes down. Yazo gets two harvesters there, which is nice, but I don't think it matters at this rate of the game. This game is pretty much over, it just needs to salt through. Ugh, oh, gonna lose in bet two mammoth tank, that is unfortunate. But Biazo is dead, I think he's gonna play this out because it's been that type of game. But, you know, he's not even using his full army to deal with this. Mid clean up that last flank attack. Blackhawks uh, scouting, see, the, yep, there's a lot of stuff there. But unfortunately, Yazo is gonna lose this game, so. Definitely a fun game. You know, looking like he's a pretty strong player. I know that he signed up for Raggle, so it'll be pretty interesting to see where he gets put. Raggle is still waiting on Cav as I've recorded this uh, video, but Zara's in there, Happy Zack in there, I'm of course in there. So Masters will still be pretty good. I'm pretty sure you know how to up as well, and Ups. So we'll have a pretty decent Masters division again, always be exciting. The map pool this season looks very interesting. We'll have to see how it goes. There's definitely some maps that I just don't want to ever play. Not that I'm going to tell you which ones those are, but we'll have to see. And there is the GG, so we'll play by, you know, happy to see that we got a nuke. Like the use of the mammoth tanks. Loved the uh, really weird opener. Yazo just, uh, he looked really good, did all the right things. Go up off of, like, the, the weird opening like that, but... I think he just got picked apart a little bit too much. He needs to do that allied base push to deal with that. Yeah, that was an interesting game. I'm sure next week we'll jump back to some combined arms, do some of the knockout stage, like recaps and everything. But until then, I'll see y'all next time.